and I found a graph of like how the people uh, reach apps typically. Um, and uh, I think this is a result of a poll. And uh, yeah, in fact, if you see like uh, the results on head to 100%. So we have, uh, uh, we can see how uh, among a bunch of uh, different ways that people can uh, reach a new app or hear about it. Uh, like, like, I don't know, uh, reading on a blog or uh, on a social network. Like the one that sends out is uh, browsing in the in the stores, uh, like App Store, Play Store. Um, so uh, if you want to promote uh, a new app that you work on, uh, that is uh, the main thing to focus on. Um, so uh, when you want to target. Uh, the store optimization, uh, how you look in the store, um, there's like two things that uh, would bring attention to your app. Like one is that um, when people look for something, uh, your app shows up. Uh, so there's like more eyes that pass through it. And the other one is that they actually stop on it and <laughs> download it. Um, so the second part, um, one is like people pass through your app, like uh, it's um, more about um, we can say intuitive things like um, you know have a good icon or make it clear what the app does, uh, have a nice title and good screenshots, good description, stuff like that. Um, the first part, however, is like uh, a little less intuitive, so that's what I I, I will focus on. Um, I've been reading a, bun a bunch of blogs here and there, and I <laughs> try to uh, bring together some material to, um, yeah, to figure out like what is the best way to promote your app in a few steps. Um, yeah, one remark is that uh, here I'm talking <laughs> about searches. So, uh, say like you're, you search. Uh, in uh, the app store for uh, I know word game. Um, it's uh, in in reality people look for new apps more through categories, um, but uh, that's something that doesn't really apply to typically to a new app because categories show uh, top apps, and it's really really hard and not practical to try to get in there. Um, so yeah, this is a little drawing that I made. Uh, so it's meant to show the process. So if I make a search, um, this is uh, the store. And uh, um, the, um, I asked the store to give me uh, some results. And uh, it will result in a list of apps uh, on my screen. Uh, so the reason why I use this uh, contraption is uh, that I wanted to sh show the fact that uh, we don't really know how the stores uh, process all the information that they collect uh, to produce that result page that they output. So I wanted to show that as something that gets a lot of data, crunches it, and then uh, uses some sort of algorithms that we don't know of to give us back results. So, um, that algorithms that we don't know of um, are what we are trying to figure out uh, over here. Like uh, people uh, typically make hypotheses on how things may work, and then they uh, try to collect data in order to see if that would make sense or, or not. So everything I'm going to say in this presentation is not going to be exact science. Like people don't have a way to prove that it always works that way. And uh, also the rules, the algorithms that these that the stores use uh, may vary in time. So um, it's just a, some sort of guidelines that uh, people use because they are reasonably convinced that they may work. Um, an important thing to say is that uh, 
yeah, obviously in the results page, um, if we have a list of apps, like uh, the more uh, the, an app is on the top of the list, is the, the more visibility it has. Um, so yeah, this is a graph that I found somewhere in which it shows uh, the chances of people clicking um, on your on your app uh, based on uh, the, the the ranking that it has in a in a search. Um, it I I don't know whether this is for phone or a tablet. I forgot, but I it it, it makes a big difference. Although the con the concept is the same because. Uh, for example, on a, on a phone, uh, uh, typically uh, the the results that are showing are like uh, two per page, whereas like on a tablet they have six. So uh, the 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 user on a phone would have to scroll really a lot in order to get uh, to say that thirtieth result. Um, so basically, we can say that, uh, for example, on a phone, uh, anything above Anything below the twentieth position doesn't really have any sort of reachability for a search. Whereas on a tablet, uh, we may have a higher number. Um, <coughs> again, uh, on a, this is a, this is a list of uh, what. People think that possibly could matter in a, in, in a, the search rankings, um, and uh, I'm going to just show them all here, and then I'm, I will just uh, drain him and show for each of them uh, some more detailed information. So we have uh, downloads. So whether an app has uh, had many downloads, um, the revenue that an app has. Uh, whether uh, an app has started. Uh, some of those, these criteria, as, as you may see, uh, apply for both the stores and some of them uh, just for one of them. Um, the reviews, the keywords, uh, the fact that an app was uh, recently updated, which means that people are working on it. It's not just left there. Uh, retention of installs, uh, the country uh, where people are looking at the sort of in, in which the store is. Um, social proof and backlinks, I actually forget what it was. <laughs> uh, so starting with downloads, um, this is an experiment, uh, an example of a, an experiment of someone that had an app and uh, started to uh, collect data on uh, uh, his position, his average position in searches based <coughs> on uh, um, based on uh, how many downloads he had on the app. Uh, so the graph should be read backwards. So uh, these are the downloads and uh, the and this is the rank. So the lower the rank, the better uh, your app is in the better spot. So uh, he could see that as soon as you were uh, getting more downloads, there was a spike in the, in the ranking. So I guess that um, this guy, I mean, this guy had to keep everything else uh, the same, like uh, the keywords and the description and the title, in order to like make sure that what mattered in that case was, was just the downloads. Um, two uh, things that people think in general about downloads is that definitely recent downloads are way more important. So. Uh, it's uh, the, the the stores typically uh, think about downloads in a trend fashion, so uh, they look for what's uh, rising. So if if something ha used to have a lot of downloads and then uh, it's not interesting anymore, it's it, it it's probably not considered interesting. Uh, paid apps. This is something uh, I. Just read in a few posts, uh, but it seems that paid apps uh, climb uh, faster uh, with uh, as they get downloads. Although, like 
being paid off, uh, they they need they have a harder time to get their loans. Um, then ratings and review. <laughs> Actually, like this one is the only exact science that I have because <laughs> we know exactly uh, what the ratings are for an app and uh, its ranking. So. Uh, yeah, this is showing that the number of ratings uh, matters uh, per se, uh, regardless of uh, what the quality of the app, uh, sorry, the, the, the actual ratings are. Um, so even if you get like a bunch of two stars, it's better than not getting any rating at all. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is for ratings, and this is, yeah, for the ratings, the actual ratings content. So uh, this is a graph that I found that was showing around that time that in which they think that Apple introduced the criteria that, uh, yeah, the, there has there started to have to be a, a clear distinction between uh, the rankings of uh, highly rated apps medium rated apps and low rated apps. Um, so the takeaway, I guess, is that uh, it's a, the apps should always try to promote uh, people to rate them and write reviews. So there are a bunch of uh, uh, libraries that automatically <coughs> show pop-ups saying, please rate me. Uh, they can uh, be made a little they can be made more interesting, uh, give it incentives, I don't know, uh, like uh, things that uh, you would give with in app purchases um, to reviewers. And another thing that to take into account is that uh, sometimes is maybe if you can track that the user is having a pleasant experience some, somehow. So for example, that he uses uh, your app a lot, then you choose the right moment when you uh, sort of acknowledge that that uh, to in order to ask for a review so that you avoid the user being frustrated and say, okay, you want to review one star. <laughs> That's it. Um, so uh, the, 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 there are a lot of, <coughs> there are a bunch of services I think uh, um, that make a fake rating sort of review possibly. Uh, I heard people saying that it's uh, it, it's dangerous to do that because uh, because like uh, the, the the stores sometimes they look for them and uh, um, for example they can check that, that all of your ratings were made by people that didn't need, didn't actually run the app so uh, I don't know exactly what they use but uh, basically if you get caught uh, you can get banned or. Uh, even like uh, not having them being considered. Uh, then the keywords. So when you submit an app, uh, this is only on the App Store. On on the Play Store, uh, you don't have this field, but there are like a bunch of uh, keywords, and basically uh, there are the races in which you want to compete. Uh, so if I uh, if I uh, write uh, I don't know here what we have autism I and someone I would result in the search in the searches for autism as easy as that um, in uh, the Play Store we have uh, the the keywords are just gathered from the description uh, but it's going to be the same process. Uh, so when you choose a keyword, choose a battle that you can win. So if you choose a very, very popular keyword, like, uh, I don't know, fun games, <laughs> you're probably, uh, yeah, you, you, you're probably going to uh, have a lot of competition. And so you uh, would result in the very, very bottom of the list. So um, as we said earlier, you don't stand a chance of uh, being in the top 20 where you get disability. Uh, so that's uh, 
not really recommendable for uh, at least at the beginning. And uh, the other one, however, on the, um, uh, the other side uh, it is uh, that we need to choose something that people look for. So if we uh, choose a keyword that uh, in which like we would be the only result, but like uh, no one looks for it, like in that case uh, we won't uh, have achieved potential in any way. So we sort of got to make a trade-off between how a keyword is interesting and uh, how and what chances we have uh, of ranking higher in uh, for that keyword. Um, so um, I, there are a bunch of tools that help out for that. Uh, I'm going to show one. Um, it's not the most popular, but at least it's uh, free because a lot of them do pay. Yeah, so this is called Search Man. Um, this is uh, the ping pong score, and uh, we have a, a graph that it shows uh, with all the keywords. And uh, uh, the estimated volume of uh, searches for those keywords and uh, that hits is about the, the competition, so how many results there are going to be in the search. And uh, yeah, you're right. Um, so in this case, all of these keywords on are not really good because uh, they, they, yeah, they bring us in a position in which uh, people are not going to get because like they want to scroll uh, that far down. And so uh, uh, yeah, like the aggregated final score is this one. So zero means that, uh, yeah, it's a bad score. Uh, <laughs> the best one is for the keyword pong, uh, which, uh, you know, for the position that it has, uh, however, uh, it's for a very high volume uh, keyword, so it can have some potential. Or actually, pink test is better. <laughs> I haven't seen it. So, um, yeah, I I don't know exactly how uh, these tools like estimate the volume of keywords, uh, but uh, it's uh, actually sorry, but uh, yeah, I, I mean they they seem to be considered very reliable. So I think that they make some sort of scraping based uh, on uh, the uh, the popular. Keywords that uh, the source suggests when you when they autocomplete what you say, um, or like uh, trending search on uh, Google or other CEOs uh, search engines. Um, I yeah I, I don't know uh, exactly what other metrics they use, but yeah they're considered decently reliable. Uh, so you can search uh, for any competitor. So uh, you can. <coughs> Take inspiration from other people. Uh, this is so. Um, if you're looking for different different keywords, for example, uh, I think there should be a section for probable competitors. We can see if they if they have uh, better ideas. For example, this guy chose that. Uh, Tennis warehouse, and apparently, like it has a huge volume and uh, low hits. So that's that could be an example of something that we could, could potentially use. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is the way to proceed. <laughs> It can also be used like uh, in a sort of uh, exploring a new market market fashion. So you can see that uh, there could be um, 
keywords uh, in which like there's not a lot of apps and there's a lot of volume, so um, you could consider, oh, uh, yeah, I could possibly make an app for that, uh, even if it was not my first choice. So then, uh, going back uh, to the app title, um, the app title is uh, more uh, of uh, something that should be considered for people to find your app interesting once they got there, but uh, there's something that is really important in uh, terms of searching. Uh, so the app title is uh, among like keywords, description, and it's out like the one that counts uh, the most. And uh, so it, if you have a keyword that you also put in the, in the app title, they made an experiment and they show that, uh, yeah, it, it ranks 10% higher. Um, so a strategy could be to keep on changing the title, uh, trying to match like very popular friends. But uh, the downside of that is that uh, if you, people are not going to remember like what your app is called. So uh, once you start, once the voice starts to spread a little bit, like uh, it can also not be that good. Um, recently launched apps, they are shown to have a spike in uh, in their ratings. Uh, that then goes down after a little while uh, because uh, the stores try to promote uh, people to discover new things. So um, there are ways to exploit that probably. The, the one that I found is to uh, maybe try to go, try to be a little more aggressive at the beginning with keywords because you're gonna have that boost uh, that you can count on. So, um, yeah, so choose like more difficult keywords and then uh, adjust that uh, as soon as the post is over. Um, then we have localization. So uh, this is kind of similar to what Derek talked about, about the other time. Um, so he was talking about more about uh, how you translate an app for different markets. Uh, here I'm, I'm going to focus more on how uh, you just uh, publish something on a different country store and uh, you and you want to you, you want to make sorry and you want to make sure uh, that it, that like uh, you rank higher in the in the local language uh, keywords um, so apparently like that's really important because uh, in uh, different countries, People don't search in English, so for the most part, uh, which is uh, apparently like more than 85%, people just uh, look for things in their uh, own language. And some of those countries uh, don't have uh, the same offer of applications that we have. Uh, I mean, we, you guys in the US have. So um, it, the, there could be like really good opportunities to uh, get a lot of attention without even changing the app just by going to a different market. So uh, the challenge is how do I translate my description and keywords and stuff uh, in a way that uh, it, it looks appealing also on other markets, granted that I don't know the languages. Um, so actually like I, I get back on the strategies later. This is just to show the, some results that some, someone was collecting. This is before having uh, all of those translations uh, in place. Uh, so he, his traffic of this guy for, uh, was uh, coming uh, almost entirely from uh, English speaking languages. So 67 from uh, the US, 67%, uh, 9% from Great Britain and <laughs> Yeah, the rest is uh, all of the other countries. So he took care of uh, uh, the keywords and the uh, translations for the descriptions. And uh, all of a sudden, like uh, the, the US that we can assume got the same market, 
sorry, the same amount of down votes passed from being 67% uh, to being 9.8%. Uh, so um, basically, he just uh, almost uh, increased by eight times the, 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 the number of, uh, of, of downloads just by doing that. So is this, is that by actually translating the app or just the keywords in the description in the store? So when people download the app, it's still in English. So it, it, it just by, <coughs> by the, just the keywords in, in, uh, in the store. So it really depends on what kind of app you have. So if you have an app that uh, is really text-based, uh, it doesn't, and it's not in Chinese, it doesn't really make sense that you translate the keywords and you put it in the Chinese store. But if you uh, have an app that is a, like a, just a visual game, so like a that, ping pong score. Yeah, or exactly. It doesn't really matter if uh, the, the <laughs> if there's like a couple of rights in English, like no one's gonna really. I mean, they would like to have that translated, but if that costs a little bit of effort, uh, you know, it's suboptimal, but way, way better than nothing. <coughs> so uh, the problem is that, like, uh, besides like getting a, tra a, a translation, which you can maybe like for a very, very basic thing, you can just uh, use Google Translate, uh, but it really does suck, so typically maybe you can find someone uh, that, you know, on a tax site that can, just for maybe ten, a few bucks, they can perform a translation of a couple of sentences that you have in the description and the keywords. Um, so, yeah, that's a little more mid of a, a more advanced thing, but like the problem with the keywords is that you, we, Besides translating, we don't know uh, what's actually trending in uh, those countries. So um, there are a couple of uh, tricks to figure that out. So this dude, he was using um, Google Trends. So on Google Trends, like I'm, I'm gonna show this thing. So this is. Uh, So this is, so I, I went on uh, Google Translate and I translated uh, ping pong in, uh, in Japanese. And I put it on Google Trans and uh, if I scroll to the bottom, uh, it has a list of like related queries that are <laughs> trending in the last 30 days. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's, that's brilliant. I really like this trick. And so, uh, yeah, I can then look at, uh, all of, the, uh, uh, of these queries, like translate them, make sure that they make some sort of sense. This is probably like Rio 2016, so maybe it's a little late to use that one. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, we can get this one with a happy face and uh, see if it could make some sort of sense to, <laughs> to use that. Uh, yeah, probably not. But <laughs> anyway, yeah, this is uh, the, this is the way that this guy was using, and um, yeah, that uh, assumes also that what's trending on the on Google may be trending on the app stores. That's not always the case. Uh, it was like. I don't know if you if you have uh, something. I can think about a topic, but like there there are topics like for example like persons that we wouldn't, wouldn't, probably wouldn't look at for an app for them. So even if they are trending, they may not apply uh, in the stores. So the other way is uh, to look for the. Um, Tap ahead the auto completion. So when you, for example, if you if we start uh, typing a few characters like as you are, uh, we are gonna have a bunch of suggestions. And uh, yeah, we can uh, we 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 can reasonably assume uh, 
that like these suggestions are popular searches. Uh, so, for example, if I start to look for ping pong, it's gonna start suggesting okay, ping pong, uh, world championship, or like uh, yeah, a bunch of other things, and we can assume that all of those things are really high uh, volume searches, and so yeah, we can either like in English use them or like for translation <laughs> uh, get it get the ping pong Japanese term over here start typing ping pong and see what other terms come in the suggestions so those are potential good keywords we can try them and see uh, how many results they seem to have and yeah that's kind of a good experiment um, this was the last thing I had. Yeah, that's it. <coughs> Questions? No question. um, so, like, regarding like which keywords you put in your description, besides so like which that's like the races that you want to enter. Mm -hmm. um, is there any like? So have you, have you seen have you seen those Craigslist posts where it's like you search for a bicycle and there's a page that has like every single bicycle keyword in like a screen full of text? Like, does it make sense to pack every single keyword that you can think of in there in, as, the, as, the limit, as the length limit allows, or is it like... You no, yeah, there, there's features? a length limit, that's the point. But so you just want to hit the length limit, or is there is there any, like, disincentive, or is there any incentive to, like, put fewer keywords that are more relevant, or do you just want to put as many as you can just put the first, like, X? Well, I mean, like, for example, on the Play Store, the, if the, you have a short description that kind of corresponds to that and it has like 80 characters so uh, you can use it I, I, I don't think there's any advantage in using less than 80 but like 80 are like really not many so if you if you yeah if you don't use them well like uh, you have really a few shots so you should just use the entire field Definitely. yes yeah 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 absolutely but like in 80 characters, like you can probably fit like 10 of them. Yeah, so that's, that's not much. So it pays off to use like short synonyms? <laughs> Don't use the same word over and over again. <laughs> in that description, it has to be like human readable too, right? Uh, it can't just be a list of more keywords. keywords. No, I mean, it's in a place where there's like a short description. description and then a long description. So what people would look, uh, you know, to have an understanding of what the app does is more of the long description, whereas the short description, uh, I think it can be just the so it is just a yeah. 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 Yeah